So let's talk about Rory. What? You know, Rory, she like loses her mind after season four. Don't blame me. If you're out on the road. Good morning, beautiful people. Today we are talking about Rory. All I can say is welcome, welcome to the Thunderdome. Let's get started. A quick disclaimer in this is that I am going to talk about Rory in all of the seasons of Gilmore Girls. So if for some reason you are 20 plus years behind, watch that, then come back. Similarly to Lorelai, we are going to talk about Rory in five aspects. Her as a daughter slash granddaughter, as a student, as a friend, in her romantic relationships, and then Rory versus Rory in the reboot. When we first meet Rory, she is 15 years old, wide-eyed, ready to take on the world, and in her best times was very inspiring to us to read, to be cultured, and to do our best. However, in my opinion, Rory in her confused slash rebellious phase is a warning to us of what can happen if we don't learn how to be comfortable and confident in our own skin and skills. Now to be fully transparent, this was a much more difficult video for me to kind of work through what I thought about Rory because at the beginning when I first finished the show, I thought Rory was great. I was very inspired by her. I was just below her when it came to a lot of her like life things that we were seeing happen. And I, even though I connected more with Lorelai, I really saw somebody that I wanted to be in Rory. However, looking back, I feel like my tone has changed a little bit, especially when it comes to the later seasons of Rory. First, let's talk about Rory as daughter. When we first start the show, Rory being 15 and as we're told right off the bat is basically a best friend to her mother, does make their relationship a little bit different. Mainly by that, I mean a lot of Rory's characteristics and the way that she makes decisions and all of that is based solely on Lorelai. They have their pro-con list that they work through for large life decisions and a lot of their smaller decisions are kind of gut-based decisions. Also on a side note, she drank coffee as a high schooler and being someone that didn't drink coffee until I want to say the first year of college, I thought that that was so cool of her. Rory throughout high school really is a daughter that respects her mother. They share nearly everything. Now there are some aspects of like relationships and boys that Rory doesn't 100% come out with right away when she has a thought. But I also think if we're being honest, when you were in high school, did you really share everything with your mother even if you did have a good relationship? Probably not. And that difference in motivation is really for me what makes the difference in high school versus college Rory. In high school Rory is just kind of nervous, not sure what to share, not sure what not to share. She's not really secretive from her mom, but then she wants to share certain things when it comes to boys and relationships. She obviously wants to bounce things off her mom. Whereas college Rory ends up taking a different path and when she doesn't want her mom to know something, it feels more secretive and more hiding than just not sure what to share at what time, if that makes sense. Now, not all college year Rory is that way. When she first enters, she's definitely wide-eyed still. She's so excited. She wants to make a difference. She wants to change the world. She wants to go into journalism. But you can see throughout time kind of the character of Rory get beaten down. Whether it's big aspects or little aspects, whether it's her starting to doubt her skills or her kind of getting very confused as to what the future should be for her. But you see her kind of teeter in decision making a lot more in college. And the zenith of that hiding and unsure type of decision making really comes in Rory deciding to leave Yale. Now that decision becomes one that is very toxic for Rory and Lorelai's relationship because as we see during their lunch when Rory actually tells Lorelai that she's leaving, it's not a decision that they're trying to make together. It's one that Rory's already made that she's just telling Lorelai. And yes, she's an adult and can make those decisions, but it really does break down their relationship for quite a while. Rory also makes the decision completely on her own to get into a, we're just gonna say a relationship with Dean while he is still married and obviously does not run that by Lorelai and that as well as the college decision are the two biggest breakdowns in communication between Lorelai and Rory that I remember seeing in the show. And honestly, seeing these two characters that are so close, it really does hurt the viewer to watch as Rory is making these decisions not based upon like logic and reasoning but based upon like emotional gut decisions and I think part of that comes from the fact that Lorelai makes a lot of decisions based upon gut and feeling but when Lorelai is helping Rory make a decision it is based upon what is best for Rory. Saying no of, of going to a dance with a bunch of kids who haven't accepted you yet of dancing in public of finding out you should never be dancing in public. Okay okay 
Whereas Rory's is based upon like fear or like just emotions or he was mine first or they told me I was not good enough so I must not be good enough. It's a lot more me focused. In the show as a whole, really Lorelai and Rory do balance the best friend and mom relationship pretty well, especially for the fact that it just kind of pretty much has been the two of them throughout Rory's entire life. But the ups and downs of it is a real option of what can happen, especially when you go to college, because you just become, that's really like your step in becoming not your own human, but it's the first time that you don't have a parent being in your household if that's the household that you grew up in. So getting to make your own decisions, you kind of see how that breaks down in the relationship. If I'm being honest, when I went to talk about this, I nearly forgot to include Christopher as Rory as a daughter, like under this heading, because I just think of the Gilmore Girls and Christopher as a father, pretty much not there, minus like certain aspects. And once he gets the money, he wants to help and pay for college and do things like that. But Rory as a daughter, when it comes to Christopher, there's only a few things to pull from. I did actually like in the reboot when Rory goes to visit Christopher and kind of asks him how he felt when Lorelai told him that she was pregnant because he's really the only person in her life that would know what that's like. And I do appreciate that she goes to him and is trying to seek advice in that way to see what could be a decision that she makes in the future. So that is actually one of my favorite moments of them. Now it's, it's again a little bit clumsy. The actors are still, in my opinion, trying to get back into character. I mean, it's been like 10 years but it was nice to see Rory go to her father for advice. Now that I've talked about the Lorelai, Rory, Christopher type of parenting relationship, I really don't wanna leave out the grandparents. Rory as a granddaughter is basically the golden child of Richard and Emily. Now, not only is she their only granddaughter, but she's following the path that they would have laid out for Lorelai if she had walked it. Now they have to learn how to have a relationship and how to have a granddaughter. I really, really love the character arc of Richard in at the beginning he's kind of clumsy and doesn't really know what to do honestly doesn't really seem even super interested in Rory but then by the end is she's just his favorite human uh, and I love that grandfather granddaughter relationship I also think that that's so nice for Rory to have a grandfather that loves her that much especially because of Christopher who has loved her as much as he can but Richard is a lot more self-sacrificing for Rory now, once again, relationships change and especially Emily and Rory changes when Rory goes to be in the DAR and they have their type of like events and things like that. Even when they get into like the bickering invite or bickering event, what? Even when they get into their bickering fight at the event and you can see Emily kind of revert a little bit to looking at Rory like she looked at Lorelai and see how that relationship is just so much different. Father gets home. We're going to talk about the house rules and be on the same page once and for all. You mean my grandfather? You know what I meant. Now I do think Emily loves Rory, but it's just interesting to see the relationship evolve. Rory as a student. Now Rory as a student is one that, especially at the beginning, was so inspiring to me to see. We see her starting at 15 years old and stars Hollow High and then very quickly she moves to a very prestigious school children and largely because of the grades and the student that she was at Stars Hollow High. Now no matter if you were somebody that was more nerdy in high school or somebody that was more, I guess, like jockey in high school, somebody that was more great focused or whatever focused it was so wholesome to see somebody so genuinely excited about reading and about her grades about the possibility of the future about writing it was inspiring to see there's if I'm pretty if I fail my finals my best book uh-huh what's the Faulkner my other best book now once she gets to Chilton we see her having to learn how to study harder and better and smarter how to really focus on what her future is going to be even more so than she was at Stars Hollow High I appreciate seeing the struggle of learning that and her getting a D and a F and just like all of these grades that proved that she wasn't I guess impenetrable when it came to her grades but that she was learning and growing as I was learning and growing. I appreciated that she took the bus
bus to school, which was very realistic. And sometimes she would borrow her mom's car, sometimes she wouldn't. She was very strong, like when she would talk to teachers. Sometimes it could be even like potentially in a semi disrespectful way if she's like mad at a teacher. But her confidence when talking to adults was really nice to see. And being a 15 year old is just like, just like awkward in your own body. So it was nice to see her just be confident when speaking to adults. Interestingly enough, when I was kind of thinking through this, I realized that college started a very similar way to how we see Rory start off as Chilton or at Chilton because she struggles, she tries to take on too much, she tries to go too hard at it and ends up having to take a step back, not in like a huge step, but in like her expectations of what she was gonna do in high school and adding the extra classes like she was doing in college. So in that transitional period, even her passion is still there. Personally, I think this is one of the strongest characteristics and aspects that they give to Rory. Also Rory being an Enneagram five, like Lorelai's Enneagram seven, fives are very like in their own heads, very thought through things. Uh, one of the fives that I always think of is like Einstein. So they're typically very, very book smart people. And you can see that in the character of Rory for sure. One thing I did realize I forgot to mention is her dropout section of college. Now Rory, obviously when not going to college is not being like a good student, but I do think that's a real thing that a lot of kids do or get frustrated with or have the gap year. So while I don't love that for Rory, I do think that it shows like a real potential progression, fortunately slash unfortunately of her character. But also I love when she goes back, she finishes very strong in college. I forgot my coffee. I need to get my coffee. Hold, hold please. Okay, got my coffee. We can keep going. Rory as a friend. When it comes to friendships, like Lorelai and Suki, the first person that I think of is Rory and Lane. Lane is somebody that Rory has known through elementary school, through high school, college, and then even beyond they stay close. Now while in the college years we don't see Lane as much, we do see Rory and Lane connect deeply anytime that they are around each other. Rory in high school wants to go and do her double dates with Lane. She's willing to kind of poke at Dean and see if there's anybody that could be for Lane. Lane also dyes her hair with Rory. They just like they're like wild in the the best wholesome aspect of that together. Rory is there to help with the wedding and help with baby showers, kind of figure that out with Lane. And even though Lane is a few steps ahead of her, for a while Rory was a few steps ahead of Lane. So I also like how the writers flip flop throughout time with them. Rory and Paris is an interesting friendship to me because at the beginning they are clearly frenemies, if not more on the enemies side of the frenemies aspect of that. But throughout the show we see more so than even Rory. I I would say potentially in their friendship as we see Paris's growth in trusting somebody. At the beginning, especially in the Chilton phases of life, we see that the only person that's really cared for Paris before Rory in a, in a not selfish way is her nanny. And that just creates a lot of barriers for Paris. My favorite Paris Rory moment is when Rory and Logan break up and then Paris and Rory are sitting on the couch just having Chinese food. It's such college years in a college area. It's got like older furniture, which is accurate, let me tell you, from somebody that just got rid of her couch recently <laughs> from college, yikes. But I love that Paris is there to defend Rory. She doesn't wanna let Logan in. She's like, no, you mess with my friend. You, I don't like that. And that just shows the true connection that they've had in the past and how because Rory was truly there for Paris, Paris wants to be there and be defensive of Rory because this is her one friend that she says is much. I personally liked that Marty and Rory end up having a platonic relationship. I kind of wish Marty would have just looked at uh, I almost said Lorelai, at Rory like a friend for the fact that it would have just been nice to see in the show. We don't really see any male female relationship that are solely friendship based. So I think that that would have been really nice to see just a wholesome friendship like that. But the main thing I don't like about Rory and Marty is how it all kind of plays out in the end. Marty's bitterness clearly shows through when he starts dating Lucy and he like lies about how they met each other in the past. Rory goes along with it because she's confused, which I also think would have happened in real life as well because you're like okay well I just met you but I didn't just meet you so what are you doing did you forget me did you not remember you had to remember me but anywho's I just it would have been nice for them just to kind of like teeter off in their friendship or maybe they just like every once in a while talk we didn't see him at all in the reboot which I mean I guess makes sense he's not like the biggest they kind of like fall apart with the Lucy debacle, but I just would have liked seeing a platonic friendship. On that same note, Lucy and Olivia and Rory, 
I really see that as a friendship of Rory's that she grasped at at a time of confusion. She's crying in the bathroom after dyeing their hair, which is not typically, I mean, obviously like dye your hair, but that's not typically like a Rory thing that she does. So it feels like I broke up, so I'm gonna cut my hair type of a like stereotype, I guess. So I just don't think there's much depth in their relationship. They don't really talk about too much besides that breakdown moment of just like, yeah, we don't know what we're doing either, which is nice to see, but it felt kind of like placed in out of nowhere for Rory. Took a break, got some more coffee, came back because now we are talking about Rory in relationships. We got Dean, we got Jess, we got Logan, we got a Wookiee thrown in there for fun, and don't forget Paul, like everybody else does. So a lot of corners in this battle. Round one. To start off the battle, we have Dean. Almost at Winchester, not quite. <laughs> so lame. <laughs> He just moved to her little town. He's going to her old high school, which is one of the reasons why she doesn't necessarily for like a split second want to go to Chilton, but it's fine. I get it, you're 15, but he is innocent and they're so sweet together. It's her first love. It's the first time that she's walking through relationships. Settled. Yes, it is. You're my boyfriend. That's consensus. It's the first guy that says I love you, which also is a little triggering to her because uh, in my opinion, not really something that she has seen a good example of. Lorelai, looking at you, fictional character. But it's something that is just so wholesome. But then something changes. Round two. Jess moves to town. Jess is exciting for Rory. He is new and I would figure to say the most like dangerous person that she's met. He's like motorcycle-y and like leather jacket-y and things like that that are just very out of the ordinary for Stars Hollow. I would also say that when it comes to reading and her actual interests, Jess and then Logan much more suit Rory than Dean does. At the beginning of the series, I noticed that they tried to like have Dean read or like have him interested in reading, but it just never really sat well with the character. Jess is one of probably my favorite character arcs in the show because we see him go from just this rebellious teenager who has some serious wounds from the past, is trying to learn to be himself, has has all these dreams, has all these hopes, kind of makes it, kind of not making it, starts to make it, and then it just becomes a very, very stable, nice, good human. But let's not forget, that's not where we meet him. I love you. Rory and Jess and Dean have this will they, won't they kind of triangle that's very confusing. Don't love, I don't feel like it gives Rory a good background story to her and Jess's relationship in the first place, but then they start dating. Now I'm not necessarily here to give you like the background for all of it. I'm sure if you're watching this video, you have a very strong opinion on which human Rory should have gone with at the end, but it is very interesting. Rory finally learns how to say I love you, she loves Dean, and then in a season or two she loves Jess, but then that doesn't work out. And then we get introduced to Logan. Round three. Logan being the stereotype that he is, is a rich kid that has pretty much had everything handed to him, doesn't have a good family history, which could lead to potentially the way that he is now, but he is very, very smart. Which kind of like we said in the past is one of the connections that he has with Rory, which is where I really, really felt like a lot of it was lacking with Dean. And then Dean comes back. This is one of my least favorite parts of the entire series because Rory Rory really goes outside of her character development at this point and goes into a relationship with Dean while he's married. Dean gets a divorce and then we see kind of Rory walk through what that relationship looks like. We see Dean and Rory both realize that they're not right for each other and after what they just went through, that's pretty heartbreaking to watch. Luckily, I don't know if you can call it that for Rory, there is Logan already in the picture and then that relationship pretty much starts from about that point on. Logan does have a similar playboy-y to stable human type of character arc as uh, Jess does, but his is a lot more wobbly. Now, very similar to the friends, we were on a break, we were not on a break. Logan and Rory have a very similar type of situation happen, except for the fact that Logan's happens with a few people. Now, whether you believe that they were or were not on a break, that's not really what we're gonna dive into here, but I just don't love that it is so wobbly in their relationship. Now, one of the things I truly do really love about Rory and Logan's relationship is that they do have so many common interests. I love that he brings like the fun adventurous side out of her. You Jump, I Jump Jack is one of my favorite episodes in the entire series. And I feel like it just gives Rory like one of the first times that she's willing just to like, I guess like be crazy, but like do something extravagant and have fun. And it's like very like whimsical 
whimsical. I just I really appreciate that episode and I really appreciate that Logan brings that part out of Rory but there's also other parts I don't like. I don't like that at the end Rory gets an ultimatum from Logan that like either you marry me or we break up. I also don't love that the series just kind of ends like that as a whole. In my opinion I had always kind of pictured them after the series getting back together and kind of moving on from there and fixing their relationship or Rory just getting an entirely different boyfriend altogether but I'm not really sure 100% which team I am if I'm being honest. And I would say the reasoning for that it gets really messy for me in the reboot. So I really liked Logan at the end of the series. I felt like he had matured and he was ready to move on. I felt like he was ready to like step forward in their relationship but then she wasn't. And then the thing is in the reboot it just broke my heart to see that we're now at round two of Rory being in a relationship while somebody else is still in a relationship. Like why? Also in the reboot is when I really feel like Jess just becomes such like a core person in that like he is so grounded and so knows himself and you can see in some of the looks definitely still loves her and is still pining for her even though she's pretty messed up. On the relationship sides of things, I don't even really necessarily want to talk about the Wookiee or Paul. I think Paul deserves better. Uh, I watched this with my husband and he was team Paul for the fact that it was just rude what every character did to him. All he did was try to reach out to them. And I don't think it's funny to just push a character aside like that when he didn't get any character development or any time to even like have us like him. We're just supposed to not like him because they forget about him. That's not fair. So honestly, when it comes to team Dean, Jess, or Logan, it really depends on me for where we're looking at in the series. If we're taking a snapshot at the end of the series, I'm probably team Logan. If we're taking a snapshot at the end of the reboot, definitely team Jess. We're about to get into like the reboot Rory section, but when it comes to the last four words of the series, I feel like the only honestly baby daddy that it could be is Logan because it's the Wookiee, I riot. Clearly not Paul, not Jess, and then there's no way on earth that it's Dean. Gotta be Logan. The last thing I'll say on that is if it's not Logan and it's some other person that we don't know, I'm probably even more mad. Now, our last subject is Rory versus Rory in the reboot. That's very hard to say. So the reason that this is really in here is because when you look at Rory season one and then you look at Rory a year in the life, those are completely two different characters in my opinion. Rory season one has a lot of conviction. She wants to go be Christiana Amanpour. She wants to go conquer the world. She wants to learn and strive and be like the best that she can be. Rory reboot says that she could have been a contender and is like pretty much okay with not being anymore. I said this a little bit earlier, but Alexis Bledel herself said that she was a little bit disappointed on how Rory Rory's character ended up. And I agree with her. Even at the end of the series itself, with not marrying Logan, Rory still gets a career opportunity and is going and is striving and is just so much more hopeful. Literally for about 10 years, the thought process was Rory goes off, she meets another man, she gets married or she doesn't get married, she's creating her career goals, she's moving forward. And then we learn that none of that actually happened. In the reboot, Rory's even struggling to work for like an online company that at one point wanted her and one point didn't. I don't really understand the point of the New York episode where like they're just in New York and then there's the Wookiee and then there's so many like just weird coincidences that happen that I just don't like. She feels a lot more chip on her shoulder than I remember her being and maybe that's just because I'm older going back and re-watching the show. The Rory of my past in seasons one, two, three, into four, little five, six, e even in seven doesn't have the biting that I feel like they give her in the reboot. Rory kind of let me down. I was just behind her in so many ways in life and I would like graduate high school and say it's not that scary anymore. When I finished college it was weird because I was ahead of Rory and then to see the character end up like that. Maybe it's more of like a me thing than her, but I just feel like there could have been so much for her that they could have done that they didn't. There are so many other aspects of Rory to talk about, and I'm sure that I've missed very pivotal parts of her character, but know that I did my best just to kind of cover overall Rory. Please let me know in the comments. I love having conversations with you guys. The conversations that we have over on the Lorelai video is some of my favorite comments that I've ever gotten, and it's just fun to see what your opinions are. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. I know I got a lot more jazz in the last kind of section of this video, but I was like two plus coffees in at that point. So I'm just grateful for you for being here. And I'm excited to have so many fun, cozy fall content. Ugh, I hope that you have a great day. Bye. Is that even saying a sentence? Look at my socks. I put on my cozy socks for you. You're welcome. I don't think I, oh, I have the recording. Oh, praise. Oh, praise. Oh, 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 oh. Ooh. I didn't think I was recording for a second, that would have sucked.